for those unaware of it. I did not begin my studies on the violin at the Romantic School of Music. In fact, one of my very first violin lessons was with Dr. Shinichi Suzuki in 1967. And the first thing that he taught me was that to be happy as a violinist, you must first put your bow on the strings and begin playing. And I always liked that. I also liked his wonderful attitude. I liked his smile and the cute little Japanese girl that he paired me up with at the Hollywood Bowl. So I'm going to break with tradition here at the Romantic School of Music for just this one lesson, which means that you will need to find someone to help you tune your violin today. Or simply do the very best that you can on your own until I can get the next video uploaded. That way, we can enjoy the happiness that Dr. Suzuki spoke about on the very first day, and at the same time, have a little fun. What most people don't realize, other than fiddle players and circus clowns, is that a violin can be played with almost anything that has a smooth edge and you rub rosin on it. Yet, if you do decide to try this someday, make sure that you smooth the edge really well, or you can ruin a nice set of strings very quickly. At the same time, a fine violin bow, just like a master violin, is a wonderful, mystical, magical work of art. <laughs> and as your skill develops and your bow techniques advance, never underestimate how much a properly chosen violin bow is worth and the difference it can make in the tone and response of a fine violin. In the meantime, your skill and how you handle your bow is even more important. So let's get started with what you have, as long as it has real horsehair. Because synthetic hair will not hold the rosin properly or sound much better than a yardstick sometimes. On the other hand, even the finest violin bow can become almost as bad as a yardstick if you or your little brother or sister grab the hair with your fingers because our fingers have natural oils in them that will keep the rosin from sticking. So the very first thing to remember about handling your bow is don't touch the hair with your fingers. To tighten the hair on your bow it's usually easiest to hold the sides of the frog with your left hand and tighten the horse hair by turning the button clockwise, which tightens the screw inside. Later on, as your strength develops and if the frog and screw are set up properly, you may tighten it using this technique. because doing it this way allows you to see the camber of the bow and the tightness of the hair just a little bit better. A lot of times, this is when small children and sometimes adults ask, why is it called a frog? And the almost unknown, correct answer is that hundreds of years ago, when the violin bow was first invented, the term frog meant to grab and pull on something. And when you look at what this little block of wood does, the term fits perfectly. <laughs> then I usually have to remind at least one little boy in the classroom to stop frogging the hair of the little girl sitting in front of him. A full-sized violin bow 
should be tightened until the hair is about six and a half millimeters or a quarter of an inch away from the stick, which is slightly less than a standard six-sided pencil. On smaller bows, the gap is just ever so slightly smaller because smaller bows are made with such different proportions. The actual amount that you tighten your bow can vary upon the quality of the bow and what kind of music you intend on playing. But for now, tighten your bow until it looks like this. The horsehair should be rosined each time you take the bow out and tighten it because each hair needs fresh rosin on it to do its job properly and the hairs move around after the bow is loosened and put away which you should always do when you're done playing to keep the bow from warping and from losing its elasticity or springiness. So get your rosin out of your case, move the cloth completely away from the surface, and while holding the cake of rosin in your left hand, hold your violin bow in your right hand any way you like this first time. You can even form a fist. And then, the best you can, rub the hair lengthwise on the cake of rosin until it feels slightly rough and sticky everywhere all the way along the hair. Each time you rosin your bow, you should also rotate the rosin so the upper surface remains flat because grooves in rosin don't allow you to get enough rosin on the center hairs, and at the same time, they damage and sometimes can even break the edge hairs. And the edge hairs are the most important hairs of all. Later, after building strength in your fingertips, most violinists apply the rosin while holding the bow very similar to the way they do when they play their violin. But in the beginning, most young students have a difficult time putting enough pressure on the hair to get enough rosin on it. And in the beginning, a little too much rosin is a lot better than not enough. Once a new bow has been rosined a few times, it usually only takes a few swipes. But if a violin bow is brand new and has never been rosined before, it can take quite a few minutes. And most violin shops usually jumpstart the process by using powdered rosin. Also be aware that if your new bow doesn't have any rosin on it when you get it, about one-third of all new violin bows, especially the ones from overseas, need to have the hair cleaned by a professional. And they do it with alcohol and a soft cotton cloth before the rosin will stick to it. But if you are forced into doing it yourself, always make sure that the hair is completely dry before you ever try putting rosin on it. It's also common for the hair on a new bow to be so short that the hair won't loosen, no matter how much you loosen the screw, especially if you live in a dry climate. And if this is the case, don't put any rosin on it until you can have the hair stretched, once again, by a professional.
who will wash their hands, get a small folded cotton cloth full of water, and saturate the hair with it. They will then over tighten the bow and let the hair stretch as it dries. Or, in extreme cases like this one, they use a small curved wedge. and take half of the hair to one side, half of the other side, behind the stick, so that they can over-tighten the bow even more. But when they do this, they have to monitor how tight the bow gets as it dries, or they risk breaking it. Hopefully, these last two items don't pertain to you. Yet, I have included them because it happens so often to students on their very first day, before they ever get a chance to play their violin. When you're finished rosining your bow, it's a good idea to gently tap the underside near the tip against the back of your hand to knock off any loose rosin dust so it doesn't get on your violin, especially if you are fortunate enough to have a fine instrument. Yet always be careful with your bow and never tap the very end of the tip of your bow against anything or you might break it. Hopefully you've already watched the video on how to really hold a violin bow. But if you haven't, the main points that you need to remember right now are Your wrist should remain straight and relaxed. Your fingers and your thumb should curve in to form a nice C shape. And none of your fingers or the tip of your thumb should ever be allowed to buckle backwards at any time, which is sometimes difficult, especially for beginners, because most people, even adults, usually have weak fingertips, and they allow their fingers to buckle backwards when doing all kinds of things. But as a violinist, starting right now, every time you pick something up, or pull on anything. As part of your training, make sure that your fingers remain curved in and don't allow them to buckle. The best exercise for most students is to curl and drag the fingertips toward the edge of a table or desk. And don't forget to exercise the thumbs especially your right one. It usually only takes a week or two for the tendency of buckling to go away if you pay attention to it and exercise your fingertips a few times each day. But regardless of how much time it takes, even if you get frustrated, don't try anything extreme like rock climbers sometimes do because you need your fingertips to remain as flexible and sensitive as possible, especially your right ones that hold the bow. That was quite a bit of information. So let's start over. Your wrist needs to be straight and relaxed 
and your fingers and thumb need to curve and form a nice C shape. And they should never be allowed to buckle when you grasp the bow or when you're playing, which is usually when the trouble begins because that's when you have to think about so many other things at the same time. So I do suggest that you do follow Paganini's advice from the very first day and learn each skill separately as much as you can. With your wrist still straight and while still maintaining a nice relaxed C shape with your fingers and thumb, place the tip of the thumb in the gap between the frog and the grip. If the hair is too long and the gap is too large, place your thumb right next to the frog. Now, rotate your hand to about 45 degrees to the bow and slightly spread your fingers. And this is the most important part of all. Allow all of your fingertips to naturally fall into place on top of the bow with the first joint of the index finger resting across the stick and the tip of the little finger directly on top of the stick. I know that this is a lot to learn and remember, so take a few minutes right now and practice grasping the bow over and over until your hand and fingers look unbelievably relaxed and everything becomes comfortable. When you get it just right, all of your fingers should have exactly the same amount of pressure, which is almost nothing. Once you feel good about grasping the bow from your other hand, practice picking it up a few times, like you will have to when you already are holding your violin. Now, hold your bow up nice and steady and slowly lower the tip. Can you feel how the pressure increases against the tip of your thumb and the tip of your little finger as you lower the bow? So let's do it again. And if you feel good about it this time, close your eyes and really focus on the pressure against the tip of your thumb and the tip of your little finger and hold it there for just a couple seconds before you reopen your eyes. And if your fingers and thumb didn't buckle, if you do wish to become a great violinist someday, remember this feeling forever because the relationship between the thumb and the little finger is what allows a violinist to play sweetly. Relax your hand if you haven't already, which is always a good thing to do. <laughs> and now let's have a little fun. This time, hold your bow and really focus on not letting your little finger and your thumb buckle. Lower the bow down and then push down on your little finger hard and fast enough to make the bow bounce. But not enough to risk dropping your bow on the floor. And remember your thumb, don't let it buckle no matter what. The amazing part is that almost everyone can do this exercise properly on the very first day without buckling their fingers or their thumb. Because fingertip strength, while necessary, is only part of solving the buckling problem. The other part is simply not getting distracted by everything else you're doing while playing the violin. It's really that simple. And by remembering these feelings, and practicing the simple finger exercises on the desk for a couple days or even a couple weeks if that's what it takes. You will save yourself an additional two months of practicing later on by eliminating the tendency for the thumb and little finger to buckle.
It's time to stand up straight with your feet comfortably apart and your toes angled out between 30 and 45 degrees, preferably with a little more weight on your left foot than your right foot. And smile big because it's time to play the violin. So just like before, Place your violin on your left shoulder and get comfortable. Then carefully pick up your bow with curved, relaxed fingers and gently place the hair of your bow on the A string halfway between the bridge and the fingerboard. The A string is the second string over from the right. One, two, E, A. Then hold it there for just a second and at the same time make sure to tilt the bow slightly away from you and make sure to relax all of your fingers including your little finger that had some pressure on it when you lowered the bow because this time we're going to push down ever so slightly with our index finger and pull the bow across the A string like this. And the happiness begins. <laughs> so do it again, but this time go a little further and leave the bow on the string when you're done. The secret, the challenge, and yes, the really tricky part is to always move the bow in a straight line, perpendicular to the strings, especially when approaching the end of it. Oh, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> so let's try it again. But this time, try to pull the bow down almost to the tip, if you can. And then, don't move. But do it with a straight bow and without rotating your violin back at all to help you get closer to the tip. <laughs> Ooh, you didn't tell me that either. Okay, no more surprises. Try it again, but whatever you do, and even if you have to stop short, keep your bow straight and don't pull your violin back. Even if you have watched all of the videos about Paganini's secrets of playing the violin, the challenge becomes very real when it comes time to actually play the violin. Because even though you may have done it right this time, the odds say that within two more long bow strokes, your bow will go crooked at the end and you will pull your violin back if you try to get to the tip of the bow. <laughs> so try it. Two nice long bow strokes. And pulling your bow down in this direction is called a down bow. If you succeeded, congratulations! You are a natural and truly gifted. <laughs> On the other hand, before congratulating yourself, have someone else watch and see if you really succeeded. Or if no one else is there, use your smartphone, a webcam, or any other video camera and record yourself. But then don't be surprised <laughs> if your opinion changes because drawing a long straight bow 
is one of the most difficult things to do, and judging it properly while doing it is almost as tough. And while it will become possible to judge if you're drawing a straight bow while looking in a mirror, almost no one can judge it properly in the beginning until they can compare it with what it looks like straight on. Drawing a long straight bow is one of the greatest challenges. Yet the solution is simple with a little more knowledge and then a little practice. So try it again, nice and slow. And the moment you find yourself wanting to pull back on the bow or your violin at all, stop. Make sure that your bow really is straight and then proceed very slowly while feeling the stretch and going as far as you can. As you play on the open strings for the next couple weeks and when you later start putting your fingers down, never draw your bow any further than you can keep it perfectly straight. If you are small, this may mean limiting yourself to the lower two-thirds of the bow for a while, especially if your bow is too long for you, which does happen, but that's okay. Just keep working at the exercise and you will be able to draw a little longer and straighter bow each day. This is a good time to take Paganini's advice and take a break. Because just like his philosophy of practicing each skill separately in order to master it, he also taught us to think about each skill or bit of information without the distraction of actually doing it in order to see it more clearly and remember it better. Because when it comes to playing the violin, if we don't remember to do something properly before we do it, the chances are that we will do it poorly. So. Let's stand up straight with our legs comfortably apart and our toes pointing out somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees while remembering everything first. Chin up, shoulder, neck, 45 degrees, face right, chin down, hard, soft, Nothing changes. Comfortable. Relaxed V. Not a piggy, but free. Tighten horsehair. Plenty of rosin. Wrist straight. Nice C. Tip of thumb between frog and grip. 45 degrees. Spread fingers. Joint of index tip of little, almost no pressure, and nothing buckles. Notice the pressure. Halfway, tilt forward, perpendicular. My arm will want to pull my bow crooked, but I won't let it. The violin will want to pull back, but I won't let it. Slight pressure, smile. <laughs> Remember that this is fun and I'm going to pull the bow down at medium speed and it should actually sound pretty good. If not, don't get discouraged. It's probably because we had to spend so much time going through the list and our muscles tightened up. So relax and try it again. It's called practicing. <laughs> wow, there really is a lot to playing the violin, isn't there? Yes, there is. 
And that is what allows us to play this game, I mean this sophisticated classical instrument, our entire life and never get bored. Ever. On the other hand, if you are already a violinist and have gotten bored and discouraged before while playing the violin, you have definitely come to the right place. But we really do need to learn and practice how to hold the violin and draw a straight bow before going on to other things, so we won't have to unlearn any bad habits later on, which is what most students do for the first two years, and what makes the Romantic School of Music so different. Because instead of wasting precious time, we believe in using it for the more famous lessons that are more enjoyable, more wonderful, and more exciting than most young violinists can possibly imagine. And we're almost finished with this, the very first lesson. It's not the most exciting one, and it is one of the longest because getting started correctly is the most important lesson of all. So, place your violin on your shoulder and your bow on the A string, which is the second one over. One, two, E, A. And while using the middle of the bow, where it should be the easiest right now, Let's play down bow. And again, but this time, instead of lifting your bow back up, let's just keep going in the opposite direction. Moving your bow up in this direction is called an up bow. So, down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow. And it should actually sound pretty good. But if it doesn't, you do need to take the time to watch the video, How to Really Hold a Violin Bow, and do the exercises with your pencil. Now, lower your elbow a little and play on the E string. It's the first string on the right. E. Down bow. Up bow. Now, lift your elbow quite a bit and play on the D string. The third string over from the right. One, two, three. E. A, D. Down bow, up bow. If you're really thinking about it, which is a good thing for a violinist to do, you may have already guessed that the angle or level of your elbow needs to match each string in order to draw a long straight bow. And your muscles might already be getting tired, but do the best you can and lift your elbow up even higher. And let's play on the largest string, which is the G string. One, two, three, four. E, A, D, G. Down bow, up bow. Now for the best part. In order to practice properly, which is so unbelievably important, we need to know what makes a violin sound good and what makes a violin sound bad. The good news is that it's fun <laughs> and it's easy. So, 
Place your bow on the A string again, like you're about to play, but this time, push down on your little finger until the bow almost lifts off the string and play a down bow and an up bow as quick as you comfortably can. It didn't make much sound and it wasn't very good, was it? That's because the first lesson about tone is that if you don't push down hard enough or move too fast for the amount of pressure you put on the bow, the bow will glide along the surface of the string and sound wispy or not make much sound at all. So now, place your bow on the A string again, and this time, push down hard with your index finger and draw a really slow bow. Even though your bow may have gone the same distance, it should have produced a completely different sound. And probably neither one sounded very good to you. Yet, <clears throat> now relax your hand. Push down just a tiny bit at the very beginning with your index finger, if necessary to help get the string moving, and draw your bow with a medium amount of speed and don't forget to tilt your bow forward. And it should sound pretty good because producing a good tone on a violin is almost as simple as following these three rules. If the sound is faint and wispy, it means that the pressure on the bow is too light for how fast the bow is moving, which is very common at the beginning, especially when a student first starts putting their fingers down. And if the sound is harsh or grumpy, it means that the pressure on the bow is too much for how fast the bow is moving. And when neither of these two items are the correct answer, your bow is probably crooked and being dra dragged across the strings. And as far as learning the next part of bowing correctly, well, that is the sweet icing on this scrumptious cake and what makes this game even better. <laughs> Because while playing in the middle of the bow is actually pretty easy, once you get used to it, the tip of the bow is very light, and playing up there requires you to push down harder with your index finger than you do in the middle. And when playing down low by the frog, it's heavy and it naturally has a deep, gruff voice. So for the same volume, you have to do the opposite and press down harder with your little finger in order to lift some of the pressure off of the bow. For many students, playing beautiful music on a fine violin really is a lot like playing the ultimate game because each of the strings really is a different character. And the bow, why it's the most wonderful tool possible that can take you anywhere and do anything. And the different positions are higher and higher levels that become more challenging and yet so much more fulfilling. You can play this game with others. You can play it for others. Or you can play it alone. You can play the violin simply because you love it. Or you can choose to make a fortune with it. Because when it comes to playing the violin at the Romantic School of Music, there are no limits. But it does take practice.